Hello, my name is Jacob Monk. I am 68 years old and I have just been 14 days in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City. And here you see a picture of me beside some beautiful young Vietnamese women that uh, wanted to speak English to me because when you sit alone in a park like I did uh, quite some time, then you are contacted all the time by young and old and middle-aged uh, Vietnamese people wanting to speak English to you. I'm afraid to tell it, but uh, some of them are partly criminals. They want to seduce you to get you to a, a remote place where they claim they have a shop, they have a school, they have something. And when you have been moved to this place and you can't find your own hotel anymore, then you are stuck uh, to all what they are trying to do to you. Or what you and what they are trying to do is to get your money. So they'll force you to buy something or they'll even drug you so they can uh, yeah they can uh, get your money in an unlegal way well vietnamese people are very friendly normally but also they see the europeans as being very rich and americans too of course and coming from denmark i just look like a white man and a white man means in Vietnam a very very rich and also a very very stupid man. Well here you have a picture of Vietnam. There are around 82 million people in Vietnam. You know Vietnam maybe from the Vietnam War. It lasted for 10 years. It ended in 1975 and 3 million Vietnamese were killed during that war. The American, they drop Agent Orange poisoned all over the Vietnamese jungle and they killed a lot of animals, a lot of plants, a lot of coconut trees and also a lot of Vietnamese people because when they have thrown poison into the forest then the Vietnamese are not able to use this forest for agricultural purposes for many years. And even today, 2016, that is nearly 40 years after the end of the Vietnam War, we still have victims of Agent Orange in Vietnam. So it's a big problem, not only for Vietnam, but for the Western world, it's a big problem too. It's a big moral problem. Well, but back to Vietnam. Here we have a Vietnamese street in Hanoi. And it's so funny just to sit at a cafe and look around because something is happening all the time. As you can see, this is in the tourist district and it makes it even more funny to be there. Here you have some other pictures. There is a Western tourist in the foreground. And here you have the street once again. And you can see beside the streets there are cafes all over. And for a very reasonable price you can get a nice cup of coffee, ice, cafe latte or beer or exactly what you want. Here you have another picture and here you see one of the nice places in uh, Hanoi and this is Starbucks coffee. They serve exactly the same coffee as they do here in Denmark and in America and China and everywhere else. This is a global brand and also in Ho Chi Minh City they have a lot of uh, Starbucks coffee shops and I would say it is uh, the visitors, the customers, they are maybe uh, let's say 
10% tourist and 90% Vietnamese. The prices are not that low as in the, the other shops, but the product is very good and there is a nice cooling system so the temperature is not that high. Here also you have the street and here you have a advertisement, discount advertisement for massage because everywhere in the tourist districts you find massage shops trying to sell massage to you. And I think there are several kinds of massage. Here you can see foot massage, five dollars, body massage, seven dollars, full body oil, ten dollars. Well, I believe that most of these massage girls, they are prostitutes. So I'm quite sure you can get everything you want, even full intercourse, if you pay a little more dollars. But I would rather stick uh, to myself, uh, stay away, because these massage girls, they are very, very provocative and uh, aggressive. They try to seduce you in any way and uh, the result is always you have to pay a lot of money to these women and if you don't pay they call their their backup man and then you will meet some very strong very ugly armed Vietnamese men that will absolutely uh, knock you down and uh, mistreat you until you pay the money that uh, these prostitutes, these um, massage ladies claim that you owe them. Here we have another picture. She's certainly not a massage lady. It was the owner of uh, the shop where I bought my meals every day. And up here in the uh, top of the picture you can see Chen Hong was the name of the little hotel where I stayed all 14 days. A very nice place run by a Vietnamese man in his, uh, his, uh, his um, female, uh, what do you call him? <laughs> he was married, a man and a woman, a Vietnamese man and a woman. And this wonderful lady here, she worked in the shop with her sister and they always smiled and were so friendly. It was pure amusement to visit their shop. And here you see another picture of the street in Hanoi. You see Starbucks coffee in the background. And here you have the last picture. I wouldn't say it's from the center of Hanoi, because actually I don't think there is any center in Hanoi. Everything in Hanoi is the center, and there are thousands of scooters all over. I would say millions. I've heard that in Vietnam there are around 100 million scooters all together, and in Hanoi there are 10 million scooters. So you find scooters all over. You won't find any Vietnamese people uh, in the city going by bike. I don't think uh, biking people exist anymore in Vietnam, at least not in the city. Vietnam has, is a developing country and they have had a lot of growth in the last 10 years. One year back, President Obama from USA visited Vietnam and this was a sign of some kind of a reuniting of Vietnam with USA. Although that USA is the reason for three million Vietnamese people dead, the reason for Agent Orange out in the uh, jungle and the forest in Vietnam, and the reason for a lot of unhappiness in Vietnam. But the Vietnamese, they want to forgive because they want economic development. They want many tourists, and there are many tourists in Vietnam, also many American tourists. And I'll say Vietnam is a very nice place to visit. 
It's not so expensive. The weather is perfect and there are a lot of things you can see. When you talk about Vietnam, you can't avoid talking about the Vietnam War. The war ended 1975. Three million Vietnamese were dead. Americans had bombed the whole north, Vietnam, especially Hanoi. They had dropped Agent Orange, poisoned. They made a chemical war against Vietnam. It was totally against the rules of war that is stated in the Geneva Convention and the rules of UN, but the Americans didn't care. Well, some of the American uh, war criminals, they even got rewarded with high political post when they came back from uh, being soldiers in Vietnam. Here you see a picture of one guy. First, he was a leader of a platoon, killing a lot of children um, and uh, old men and women. And after that, he got home and he was uh, made a senator, Senator Bob, uh, um, Bob Carey. He was a senator in USA for many years. So the Americans, they liked the war criminal acts that they committed against the Vietnamese people. And therefore, it's a little strange for me to see how the Vietnamese today, they adore the Americans. Well, when you go to the Central Museum in Ho Chi Minh City, the Museum of War, War Remain Museum, it's called, then you can see all the American weapons. You can see a lot of photos from the war. You can also see the instruments uh, of uh, torture that the American used when they catched uh, Vietnamese soldiers. They were put in cages like this and they could lie there for days and they would probably die because they didn't get any water. And then, of course, if they uh, didn't tell what they were supposed to tell, they were beheaded, executed in a guillotine like this. But uh, the Vietnamese, they made a heroic effort to fight against the American occupation, and they made a lot of uh, traps out in the jungle, here you see one trap, it opens, you fall down the trap and uh, some spears down there and you'll get killed or get hurt. That was the way the Vietnamese could make resistance. And of course they got help from the Soviet Union. They got weapons from the Soviet Union. So it was not only a low-level guerrilla war, it was also a real war with modern weapons. And a lot of times the uh, Vietnamese, they had to hide themselves under the ground. They make big systems of tunnels going kilometers and kilometers from one place to another. Here you see the entrance to a tunnel like this. The Vietnamese war was a gruesome war. 50,000 American soldiers were killed. Although that the Americans had the best weapons in the world uh, compared to what was uh, available at that time. And the Vietnamese had only lightweight weapons, especially in South Vietnam. The Americans, they installed uh, dictatorship, uh, a president, they uh, elected themselves and uh, installed in South Vietnam in Saigon. He, uh, they made a big house for him and uh, this house is a tourist attraction today because you can go and see it, the former presidency 
palace. Now it's a museum. You see, it's very fine here. You know, when Vietnam was uh, liberated, the first president of the United Vietnam was called Hu Chi Minh. But uh, the dictator before him, he lived in this house here. It was uh, guarded 24 hours a day because they didn't want to get attacked from uh, soldiers, guerrillas and the population. There was no real democracy. And in the house, they tried to run whole southern Vietnam in a kind of a so to state that was very, very repressive against any democratic forces of call all kind of nationalists and communists were simply executed and they were totally forbidden. They had to work underground. And here you see the military staff headquarter. It's also in the presidency building. The president and the military was actually uh, two sides of the same coin. And the American elected dictator, he always had a helicopter ready because he knew before or later his castle would be attacked by the Vietnamese soldiers. So he had to f uh, flee away. And therefore, he had an American helicopter ready all uh, day long. And here you see some of the very fine rooms where you could meet with foreign leaders. And here you see the underground tunnel. There is a secret tunnel. It has not been open for public yet. It goes from the palace and underground for a long, long way, long away, so the president could uh, get out of the castle if uh, the um, national, the Vietnamese soldiers, would attack the castle and his helicopter did not work. And here you see the radio station. He had his own radio station under his presidency palace. And this was all part of the American installed uh, dictatorship in southern Vietnam. But uh, and here at last you can see what happened to anyone trying to go against the American uh, occupiers. They were put in cells like this. And when you stay like this for a few days without getting any water, you will certainly die. Well, today Vietnam is a free country and you can see, although it's not a real communist country, because in uh, Vietnam it's only a state structure that is communist. The economy is pure capitalism. It's a market economy, just like Europe and America and the rest of Asia. So don't expect to come to any kind of real communist country when you go to Vietnam. That's not the case. And uh, you see these flags here. This is not the Vietnamese flag. It's a flag of the Vietnamese Communist Party ruling Vietnam. But this Communist Party is not uh, forcing Vietnam to be any kind of communist country because, as I said, it's only a state that is run by communists. The economy is a market economy. It is plain capitalism. And now I'll show you the Mekong Delta. A lot of the fighting during the Vietnam War took place in the Mekong Delta. In the Mekong Delta today, you can go with other tourists on tours and the Delta will look like this. You can go by a boat, travel around from one small island to another small island, it will cost you not a lot of money. And when you come to one of these islands, you can have a nice 
meal and cup of coffee and some beer and you can lie here and sleep in this special, I don't know what you call them in English, these special uh, hanging beds, they are very pleasant. And today there are no crocodiles in the Mekong Delta, but you can go and see some crocodile farms if you want. Here you have a crocodile farm. The crocodile farms are very nice to see, and the reason they exist is because there's a big production of uh, all kind of fashion equipment uh, and uh, to make fashion equipment, you need the skin of crocodiles. And that is why they, uh, they have crocodiles on the crocodiles' farms. And also the Vietnamese, they eat crocodile meat. So you could use crocodiles for a lot of things. But as I said, in the river today, there are no crocodiles. And... Um, after the tour to the Mekong Delta, I came back to my hotel, and here you see my hotel, Chen Hong Hotel. I stayed at first floor on that very nice hotel in the center of Saigon, in the center of uh, Ho Chi Minh City. 500 meters away, there were there was a big park. There are many parks all over in Vietnam. And in the park you can sit and relax. The weather is absolutely wonderful in uh, Vietnam. It's warm in the summer. It's very warm in the winter. It's only pleasant warm. And this was winter, so it was absolutely uh, wonderful. Around 25 degrees every day. And when you sit in the park, you can see Vietnamese women or men making exercises. It's very good for your health to do these exercises. Normally they have a, some kind of speaker system playing music and then they make this performance. I don't know if you should call it dancing or what, but it looks very nice. It's a kind of an old Asian art form. They have the same dances in China and also somehow the same in Thailand. And um, it is very nice to look at when they perform. Of course, they have uh, special dresses on. Here it's only training. So uh, they are out in the park and it's very good for your health. And when you go to the park, you can be sure when you have been sitting on a bank for five minutes there will come one or two or five or ten students they want to talk to you they want to train their English they want to have free English lessons and especially if you are Native American or Native English they can hear that your language is very good so they want to speak to you but you'll find out that the conversations you have with these young people, it is not very interesting. It's the same. They ask you, where do you come from? How do you think about Vietnam? How long time are you going to stay? And so on and so forth. But you also have to take care uh, because it's not all people in the parks that are quite innocent. Here you have some young students there playing music out in a park. There are absolutely no tourists in this park, only me taking the picture. So they don't play music for the tourists, they play for themselves. And here you have another park. It is a tablet, computer, mobile phone, a smartphone workshop. Every day people get together on certain points out in the parks and they take with them their uh, tablet computers, their mobile phones, and then they uh, exchange um, uh, knowledge. So they all train getting better to use their equipment. And it's totally free. They just help each other. It's such a great idea. And uh, of course, you can only have a thing like that because of the weather. It's so wonderful. But some 
Vietnamese, they believe that it's very polluted in Vietnam. Therefore, they use some kind of masks in front of their mouths not to uh, inhale the pollution. And also the Vietnamese, they believe that to be beautiful, you have to be white. You know, Vietnamese, they're like Chinese. They are brown or yellow. They think that Europeans and Americans, they are the most beautiful people in the world because they are white. Therefore, you can get a lot of treatment in Vietnam to make your skin more white. And also they use these masks, not only because of the pollution, but also to protect themselves against the sun. Because if a Vietnamese man or woman gets a lot of sun, he or she will be even more brown. Uh, he will go from light brown to dark brown. And they don't like that. They want to be what they consider beautiful and to be beautiful in Vietnam is to be white. Here you have some young students coming to me wanting to practice their English. But as I told you, you have to uh, be careful because some of these people there are actually some kind of criminals. They want to get you away from the park they invite you to their school, to their home. They invite you to play cards, to see something far away. And then they take you by car, or by scooter to a, a house uh, a long way away from your hotel. And you'll not be able to find back to your hotel yourself. And then they force you to uh, do a lot of stupid things because they want to have your money, of course. They force you to play poker. They force you to buy some stupid things. And if you don't do it by yourself, they will actually give you some drugs so you just pass out and then they rob you, plainly rob you. You can read the internet about this Try to Google the word Scams Vietnam. You can also see a lot of stories about this on YouTube. And the problem is you don't really know who's the real student who wants to speak English to you and who's the criminal. But one advice I can give you is if this person coming to you, he or she speaks English well, that is as well as a European or an American, you can be 100% sure it's a criminal. Only if they speak Vietnamese English, and that is very poor English, you will be nearly not able to understand what they are saying. Well, then they are probably real students wanting you to help them practicing their English. And all over in Vietnam, in the big cities, you can see posters like this, looking for native English teachers. You can earn from $1,200 to $1,400 every month to teach English at a school. And they really need that because they know that the English language is the key to a prosperous economic future for uh, the people in Vietnam. Now, last but not least, I will show you something about the religion in Vietnam. And I should say the religions because there are many religions. The main religion is in Vietnam is some kind of Buddhism, Taoism, Shintoism. Asian religion, but there are also a lot of Catholics and there are some Muslims, not many, but a few Muslims. And here you have a temple. The Buddhists, they make temples like this everywhere, in the shops, in the streets, and everywhere you find temples with offerings. They give offerings to their ancestors, their dead ancestors. And also, because Vietnam is so close to China, they have 
some inspiration from the dragon religion. This is a dragon in a Vietnamese park, and this is some kind of dragon temple out in a big park close to the center of Hanoi. Here you have a Catholic church. Uh, actually, it's the main Catholic church in Hanoi. It was built by the French, and uh, I don't think it's too beautiful, but, uh, well, it's okay. Here you see another Catholic church, and because the French, they built the Catholic church, then uh, you'll find inspiration from France everywhere. You have probably heard about Bernadette from Lourdes, and actually they have copy, copies of uh, the place in Lourdes where the holy Saint Bernadette saw Virgin Mary 150 years ago. You will find these copies in many churches in Vietnam because they were built by French Catholics. Here you have a shop, actually it was the shop where I bought my meals every day, and the ancestors of the owner of the shop, they had their pictures up here in uh, two and a half meters from the ground, and there were lights and they make offerings for these ancestors. Yes, Vietnamese are very religious people, they like all kinds of religion. They have religious freedom, <coughs> of course. Any kind of fanatism and terrorism is totally uh, unlawful and forbidden. But as long as you can have a nice, peaceful religion, you're welcome to practice your own religion or to join one of the other existing religions. And um, being a big fan of Virgin Mary and the mother goddesses you will find all over the world, I'll end my show here from Vietnam with showing some kind of female god. Well, she looks like a European because she's white. She's a bit dirty, but she's white. And according to Vietnamese belief, white is the most beautiful color a woman can have. So this is a very beautiful Vietnamese woman with her child, and I think that represents the culture of Vietnam. And I'll say to you here at last, Vietnam is a wonderful country. You should go and visit Vietnam. It's cheap, people are friendly, and if you behave in a, uh, in a nice way, Everyone will be nice to you and you will have a wonderful time. You can meet a lot of other tourists and you can have a lot of experiences uh, seeing the many interesting and beautiful places all around in Vietnam. Thank you for listening. <laughs>